A nice piece of cross grain tiger wood. Let's make something pretty. Right then, I haven't made a lamp on video in ages. I've made, I've been, I've been making them away because uh, they sell well, but uh, I haven't made one on video in ages. So I'm gonna do another one here. Uh, in the lathe, I have a piece of tiger wood that's cross grain, and it's three and three quarters by fifteen. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is round it off. Going at 900 RPMs, right? I'm slightly too close there. Right. Come down a bit. Now, because this is cross grain, I'm going to use a ball gouge. And as always with Tiger Wood. While I'm rounding it off, it's going to chip like crazy. And uh, just when I get to the last cut, it'll be, uh, it'll just smooth out. It's almost, it's almost magical. Right? Then for round, no, it's still a slight touch there, a little chip there. I'm not worried about it because it'll come out. I'm still flat there. Okay. All right, so now let's round it off. I'm going to straighten out both ends just for uh, so I can see what I'm doing, basically for measurement. More important on this end to get a flat base. flat anyway right now I'm not gonna go into the theory if you would of how to turn lamps as I went into that in a previous video uh, how to make them not tip and stuff and what I'll do is I'll stick a link to that up there and I'll stick uh, a link in the description sorry about that I got called away right uh, where was I yeah, I'm not going to go into the theory of lamps. I did it in the other video, and there's no sense of doing it again. Um, right, design-wise, lately I have been noticing that angular designs are what people are looking for rather than curves. And what I've been doing lately is basing an awful lot of my designs on uh, 60s lava lamps, and they seem to be going pretty well. Right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cone basically from about there up and then I'm going to turn the bottom into like the base of the lamp. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is cone this out and I'm going to bring the speed up to about 1500. Still working with a ball gauge because remember this is cross grain. Now, what I want to 
want to do is come up to about there and create like a step or a lip. Right, I'm going to have to sharpen this gouge because it's uh, tiger wood and tiger wood eats edges, especially when it's cross going. Step. Move down a bit. do to show you a trick is I'm going to put a deliberate bump in there. Right, so I'm going to go in there a little bit, come back out and go back in. Right, we now have a deliberate bump there. I'm going to show you a trick later. If you're uh, cutting a long spindle like this and you're after getting a bump in it, show you how to get it out. Now down here I want to do the base. Right, so I want to come in. So how big I want the foot on this. There. Right, now, this pump, right, you could do it with riding the side bevel like that, right, and you'll take it out and the side bevel will guide that into a straight line, right, but if you're not confident enough to do that, right, you can do it with sanding, right, especially if, like, if it's the first time you're trying to cut such a long straight, right, you can do it with sanding. Some people will call it cheating. Uh, 
it's not if you don't have the confidence in yourself to do a long strike cut like that this will get you out of trouble right uh, I'm just going to find a piece of wood, piece of wood now. Oh, he's not this will do it. Get yourself a long, flat piece of wood and put some sandpaper, 80 grit, wrap it around it like that and use that and just run up and down there and you can't help but get a straight line. Right? Now what you're looking for, let me turn it off, what you're looking for is, you can see there, that's the high part there that I put in, that's the deliberate bump I put in, right? You can see that the texture of the wood looks different there than it does there, and then, then it does there, which means that's the high part. You want the texture to be the same all the way along, that means your piece is straight. Right. Now you can see this, the texture on that is even all the way, which means that side line is now perfectly straight. That's just something you can do if you're starting. It's a way to get yourself out of a hole. Uh, just using a just using a straight edge like that and some uh, and some eighty grit sandpaper. Um, as you go on, you'll get better at cutting those long straight lines. It's actually harder to cut a long straight line than it is to cut a core, right? So that one, if you're just starting out trying this, that one will get you out of trouble. Now, the one thing is, you've hit there with 80 grit, you need to hit the rest of it with 80 grit, or the sandings are gonna be the same. Right? So I'll just, a quick hit on 80 grit and the rest of it. Now that we've hit that with 80 grit, it's the same uh, basic surface on it all the way over. Now it's just a case of sand as normal. Right, so I'll do that and I'll be right back. Right, there's the basic sanding done. Now I'm going to go through my normal finishing routine. Right? Now I'm not going to do this on camera, but I'll tell you what it is, right? Because it takes too long. I'm going to clean it with METS or denatured alcohol and then I'm going to leave it 10 minutes to make sure that all of that is gone, right? Then I'm going to give it two coats of shellac based sanding sealer. Leave it 10 minutes to, leave it 10 minutes to first one and 15 minutes to the second one, right? I want to make sure that it's bone dry before I do anything else. Then I'm going to use Yorkshire grit on it. The Yorkshire grit, after I, after I use it and I'm getting clean to, uh, kitchen towel back, I'm going to leave it 10 minutes. Couple of reasons. Number one, you want to make sure that that stuff is completely dry. And number two, when you use Yorkshire grit, you do put some form of heat into the wood. When you're putting a wax on, you do not want any heat in this wood. So leave it 10 minutes and then put your wax on. Um, it will give you a higher shine, 
right? So I'm going to do that now, and I'll be back then. Right, then just buffing off the Yorkshire grit, or the Hampshire shame, should I say. Um, right, when I was sanding, right, something I recommended in one of the other lamp videos, is that you always kind of sit back and look at a lamp while it's still on the light. See if there's parts you like, parts you don't like. Right, uh, so I did that uh, as I was sanding. Right, sat down for a few minutes and had a look at it. I decided that up here was too heavy, so I uh, cut it down so it's thinner, and I think it looks a lot better now. Raise it up a little bit, get a bit of better buff on it. Now there's no pressure on this at all. Right. Now since I started the finishing process, it's been a half an hour. To allow for drying of each coat. And that's where people are going to make mistakes. And it's something we're terrible for actually doing on YouTube. When we're doing videos and demos and stuff. Is we'll put, say the Yorkshire grit on and then we'll just clean it off and we'll immediately go on to the wax that does work but if you want to guarantee it give it time for the heat to go out right give it some time and there we have a nice pretty lamp body now we've got to do the base, so I'll move the camera and uh, we get on with the base. Right then, for the base, I'm going to do it the same way I do all the other lamps. I'm going to put a parting tool in and cut a ridge here for the base of the lamp. Right. So about a centimetre and too close. about a centimeter in from the edge and about a centimeter and a half deep maybe even two centimeters deep I'm going to get in there with a spindle gouge to get that as much of that as I can away. Just put it across there. Right. Now I'm going to sand and finish in there because remember that's part of the piece. And as anybody has seen my videos before, now it's a personal hate of mine not to finish a base properly. Right, so I'm just going to give it a quick scrape. Get my tool marks out. Very, very light scrape. Extremely light. Doesn't take much. Now I'm going to sand and finish in there, and we get to the next stage. So, we'll be back in a second. Right now, I've just sanded that down to 320, uh, because when I take it off, I'm going to chisel that off, and then the inside is going to be sanded to get that down level. Then I will put the Oxford grit and the Hampshire sheen on it. Right, but I'll do all that by hand. So I'll be back when I do that. Right then, so there's the base done. It's finished exactly the same as the outside. Right now, to drill it. Now there's a couple of skill. Now there's a couple of skills of thought on this. Uh, there's long haul boring kits. Right. My personal opinion is that unless you're doing a standard lamp, 
they're very pricey for what they do uh, I also think they're awkward I've, I've had two and I actually sold the two of them because I just don't like them they're too awkward um, I prefer to use a long bit uh, now as I said if you're if you're doing a standard lamp uh, you know one of the tall ones that sits on the floor and there's two or three pieces they're an absolute must because the center line hole has to line up uh, but for normal lamps a long drill bit is fine I prefer using it um, now on the top of that is still the mark of my spore drive I'm not worried about it because the kit I use covers that perfectly right uh, you'll see the kit in a minute right now the one thing about using a long bit is they have a tendency to wander so what to do first is you drill a pilot hole with a normal bit of the same size Just make sure you're straight. And pull it out often to clear it. Because I've said this in other videos, so I'm trying not to repeat myself in this video, if I can. Uh, if you bind up a drill bit when it's down in the middle of a lamp, you're not going to get it out without taking the lamp apart. Right, so that was an 8mm standard drill bit, and this is an 8mm long bit. Right. Let, let the drill bit do the work. Okay, don't force it, let it go through. Now, once you come out within that base, it's fine. Right. I'm a little off to the one side there, but it's absolutely fine because I'm within that circle. Right. Now, now we get on to assembly. Right, so I'll shift the camera back over to where it's easier to see, and we'll get on to assembly. Right then, now that you've got that done, and your holes all the way through, you have to pick somewhere around the edge here. For the word to come out so that the lamp will sit, will sit properly so basically find a pretty piece for the front of the lamp that's a nice piece there so what i want to do is i want to drill a hole right here at the back right now what i'm trying to do is drill into this void here right so come up a little bit higher now the whole thing on this is very very light drilling because you'll snap that edge if you don't and keep the drill fast but hardly any pressure right and you get a nice clean hole all the way through and you won't break out that piece there right now we're going on to assembly Right then, assembling the lamp. Now, there does be, normally on the videos and in social media, there's a lot of debate about this part, right? About the testing that's required. It depends on where you live, right? Uh, where I am, the requirement is that the electronic parts are CE certified. Which is why I actually use this kit, right? This kit comes CE certified. But I actually go a step further. Whereas this one is tested and CE certified for use on wooden lamps. Now, it depends on where you live, what 
you have to do right there are certain places where every single lamp has to be sent away for a pat test there are places where if you're mass producing lamps it has to be sent away for a test but if it's a one-off arc lamp it doesn't uh, there are places that don't require certification at all but where i am it's uh the electronics must be certified right now this kit that i use as i said i use it for a couple of reasons one it's easy to do it's easy to use and two uh it's certified for wooden lamps right then what i'll do is i'll feed the word through here And then up through the main hole in the lamp. Right. Here at the top. Right. Then I'll get the cap piece. Oh no what? I will get the screw on piece. Right. Line that up so it's in the middle. Get a brado and Mark where my screw holes are going. If it'll decide to stay, which it is not centered. There we go. Right, and now I'll screw this piece on. Up on Just clips on over them. Sometimes these need a bit of a tap to go on because they're quite tight. There we go, there we go, that's on. Right now, right, right. Then when that's down, right, I'll slip that piece over. Which is the screw piece and grab the card holder slip the card holder on get down over the wire then get the screw piece i forgot to grab a little flat screwdriver Screwdriver now. Right. Unscrew the two acceptors. Slip the wires in. Tighten the screws down. Pull the wire from the bottom so it meets up. Screw that down. Pull the wire through the base, and there is our finished lamp. Right, I'll take a couple of the uh, pictures of it and put it up at the end. 
if you've enjoyed that one if you wouldn't mind liking the video and subscribe if you wish uh, and i'll uh, see you in the next one